What's on P938-29, part one, take one. May God have mercy on Tony Wilson's soul. Badum Badum lines from a song, a punk anthem called Boredom, first released in Manchester in February 77 on an independently produced EP called Spiral Scratch. That EP is now a collector's piece, a punk classic. It both influenced and represented the spirit of the new music which thrived in the last two years. The group in question, Buzzcocks, were formed and the songs written by, on the right, Howard Devoto. He changes his name each time he moves town. And on the left, Pete Shelley. Shelley was what his parents were going to call him if he was a girl. By the summer of 78, Shelley and Devoto had parted company. With their own bands and record contracts, they had each released albums to great critical acclaim. Albums which, though musically very different, define the present state of play. As well as being the story of how these guitars got to be in this condition, this is also the story of Pete Shelley and Howard Devoto, two young men who seized their desires and helped change the reality of modern music. Autumn 1975, Bolton Institute of Technology. Shelley and Devoto are students, and they're very bored. I was incredibly sick of what I was hearing and what I was reading uh, on record, on paper, in people's minds. November 75, Devoto puts up a notice looking for musicians, an obscure notice which prophetically included the word punk. Shelley answered the notice. Well, about a couple of weeks after we met with the use of form in a group, we started just writing songs together. And the songs were good and we enjoyed them. And we thought, we really must get a group together proper and go out and perform these songs you know, so people can enjoy them as much as we do. Feeling betrayed by contemporary music, the sounds inside their heads were revolutionary. Energy, aggression and simplicity. To many it seemed harsh and tuneless. It would later be called punk rock. Everybody that was involved with that movement, and certainly myself, and I think probably Peter and the rest of Buzzcocks, was that you, were, you didn't think you were going to be around very long. You didn't think you were going to make another record. You didn't really know that you were going to play another concert. And therefore, <laughs> In a way, uh, you had to do it fast. And you had to do it as directly, as directly as you could. Well, in some ways, it was in opposition, and we were glad about that, because we didn't want to be the same as everybody else. But also, it was different because, because we were different. And, um, it, it just seemed to arise from the things that we were doing, uh, that we had this feeling between us that we wanted to do something which was entertaining and exciting and actually meant something. I thought of it as an attack, but not uh, in any straightforward, upfront, uh, I'll show you my fists, man, sort of thing. Uh, it was just an attempt to uh, step sideways and shadow box with a few phantoms or something. The fight begins on July 20th, 1976 at Manchester's Lesser Free Trade Hall. Shelley and Devoto on stage for the first time. They have now added a Stratford schoolboy on drums, John Ma, and on bass, Steve Diggle, unemployed from Oldham. This is an 8 mil film taken by a friend. No soundtrack exists. Well, it was a bit of a rush job. We were told that unless we were on the stage within five minutes, we wouldn't be playing at all, and then we could only play for half an hour. But, um... I mean, it was exciting because we were partially organising the gig as well. So there was a lot of... Um, hanging around and everything. In those days, it seemed exciting. It was on the stretch. But uh, it's still exciting. A lot of people enjoyed it. When I uh, came off the stage, I went and looked down the back staircase and uh, I'd cut my finger on uh, one of Peter's guitar strings and I uh, had some blood on my finger. And uh, I thought I felt 
So unbelievably blank. Between July and December 1976, Buzzcocks play 10 gigs. They pile in a van and go down to the screen on the green in Islington in London. Although they set the pace from the start with their friends the Sex Pistols and The Clash, because Buzzcocks are from Manchester, their top line status is a while in coming. It looked to have arrived though with the release of Spiral Scratch, made with money borrowed from friends, and in particular money borrowed from Shelley's dad. It has sold 15,000, it's worth $100 in New York, but time was up for the special relationship. Just three weeks after release, Devoto decides to leave the band. In a statement to the music press, he says, I don't like most of this new music, I don't like music, I don't like movements. Uh, well, it was just uh, another one in a series of uh, perverse movements on my part, really. Like uh, getting involved with the sort of music the Buzzcocks were doing was uh, era a reaction and a maybe a slap in the face for for everything that everything else so leaving it i uh, had this second slap in the face in the back of my mind uh, you know did it cross your mind that when howard left that was the end um it may have done but it wasn't there for very long it was the thing where if it I, if Howard leaving had made it the end, then it, it would have been just a waste of time as, as doing it because there'd been nothing actually there. Uh, because he left before we actually uh, became really well known. And I thought, well, there's two things we can do. We can either get an, in another vocalist or we can, or, or, or I can do the singing. So I thought, well, we get another vocalist, and that means a front man. And it, it's a change the character of the whole group. So I thought, I'll do the singing. So I did. For the Buzzcocks, it's back to the notice board, this time in Virgin Records shop in Manchester. Leading Northwest beat combo require a bass player who is pretty or competent or pretty competent. This is Garth, who's fairly pretty. Diggle moves over to play the guitar, and Shelley takes over from Devoto as the band's front man. Don't stop at me. This one's a nice pop song. The Electric Circus in Collyhurst, Manchester, October 1977. One, two, three, four.
It was the night Elvis Presley died. The news came through around midnight, but earlier that same evening, at the Electric Circus, the Buzzcocks signed a major record contract with United Artists. The company, founded in Hollywood 50 years ago by Charles Chaplin, Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks, had signed up the punks then resident at 364 Lower Broughton Road, Salford 7. I think no, it isn't so much like the music industry is as simulated as, it's that we've assimilated the music industry because, uh, well, as personally, I have, I have a lot of control of what we do. And, um, and, and we are in charge uh, in, in lots of respects that groups weren't before. And the only thing that sells out now are record shops and concerts. And so, it's, it's, so I think it's people are getting what they want. And it's just, it's just a means of communication. It's all a record shop is. Meanwhile, back in history, Devoto was perhaps lonely, perhaps frustrated, certainly bored. Back to the notice board, having found a guitarist, he asked now for bass, drums, keyboard or woodwind. Quote, punk mentality not essential. He finds two art students and two local musicians. He has a band. The band are called Magazine. They play their first gig on November 2nd, 1977, and their third performance is at the Elizabethan Ballroom, Bellevue.
this car In a null and void he sees The man at the centre of the motorcade Can choose between coffee and tea In a null and void which is The man at the centre of the motorcade Has learned to enjoy a sandwich In the boulevard I just liked the word motorcade and uh, cascade. Uh, the big fat black cars moving through the street and uh, people throwing their eyes over them, the effect it had. The idea of the uh, big man in the back of his limousine, you know, that was all. It was the no. Man, the man who can't even choose between coffee and tea. No, he can do. But uh, perhaps, perhaps that's all that he can do. Perhaps all, all despite all his uh, power and influence, really, uh, you know, the most fantastic, the biggest uh, decision he can make in any day is to choose whether he has coffee or tea. So choose between Buzzcocks and Magazine, both very much bands of their time. And it was a time to release singles. Buzzcocks released Orgasm Addict at 45 RPM. Magazine. They signed speedily to Virgin Records and released shot by both sides. Buzzcox put out What Do I Get? Magazine put out Touch and Go with Goldfinger. Buzzcox follow up with I Don't Mind. All five singles hover in the charts at around the 30 mark. Widespread acceptance was denied by the bigotry of disc jockeys and radio station controllers despising anything connected with the punk movement. Thinking it a repugnant fashion, they refused to play it and they still refuse to play it. Badum, badum. What's on P938 strip 29, part 2, take 1? Do you not think that the movement which you were involved in at the beginning, I mean, did something for people? Did it oh, I know it did. I know it. I know it did something for people. I know it did a, uh, a lot for a lot of people. I know it, it did a lot for me. What did it do for a lot of people? We'll come to you later. Uh, always later, always later. It's almost like a great communications network. It's an unlimited company. It's all around. I think it gave it 
it gave them confidence to to do things to operate out there did it give you confidence to operate out there it certainly did you get more confident by the week don't you really <laughs> Yes. If disc jockeys are frigid, then the music press are in love with the movement and Manchester music. This Shelley is now hailed as the romantic poet of the late 70s. I preach an acceptance of love. Howard Devoto, on the other hand, is, quote, the intellectual, though the jaded music hacks who saluted him as the messiah of 78 back in 77 are now more prone to comment on his receding hairline. There is, though, one serious and frequently voiced criticism of both bands. They are not political. Uh, I think that if you deal as honestly as you can uh, with yourself and with the things that you write about, then what the, what the hell ever you write about is, is political. A lot of the Sex Pistols songs aren't political. They're all about actually coming to terms with being yourself. Um, and, and the politics was just something which was thrown on because there was talk of anarchy and, and, and a new order and revolution. And therefore that's why they, the whole political thing got clustered together. And a lot of people think that a political solution is the only one, but you've got to change people as individuals uh, before you can change people en masse and it will work. So I think people need um, uh, a, a new way of living inside themselves. And it's, and it's only then can people actually do things. Shelley's personal politics find expression in Buzzcock's new single, Love You More. January the 4th, 1975. Just started going out with this girl. And she worked at Woolworths in Bolton. And, and I saw her uh, before dinner, then went home and wrote a song. And then saw her at dinner and we told her about the song and I'd just written it. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a true song, it was a true love song. One, two, three, four. I'm in love with that, been like this before. I'm in love with that, this time's true, I'm sure. Find a final line, they wonder. I've been hurt so many times before. So my darling, I will never leave you You say my heart to always love you more Love you more It's my heart again That drives me so wild I just can't explain Although I'm not too shy The razor used to hang from a safety pin. Two years is a long time. Are you not surprised that the great bored blank generation are now into love songs a la Picelli? No, because I, I think I think after you've got bored and you found something to do, then you start concentrating on things like being in love, and I think that's through all all the time. I mean, I think people have more things to do than just talk about how bored they are. And uh, I think falling in love is one of the things that most people do. The one major and obvious change in the life of both bands is that the men who attack technique for technique's sake are now, technically, better musicians. 
Um, it means that all these abstract ideas and thoughts which have got whizzing around in me have a means of actually getting them out because sometimes I can be frustrated by actually wanting to say something but not knowing quite the right words or having the right abilities to be able to do it. The, uh, the change is that there's more time in it and there's more aspects. There's more, uh, more sides to the whole thing. Uh, only a few more because there were, there were those sides then in, in the songs for me. It all sounded like this is the same primitive emotion being rerun, uh, which it wasn't. Now, the, all there is, is a better uh, binding. Magazine are bound together by Barry Adamson on bass, Howard Devoto sings and writes the songs, John McGeeck shares the writing and plays guitar, Dave Formula, an elder musician, moved in recently on keyboards, and Martin Jackson plays the drums. your tongue but it went without saying it went on too long all the straws you clutch at have burst into flames and so you smile that way tantalizing left lane Should have settled for less You're gonna forget yourself In my happy
That a track from their latest album, which is being heavily promoted. Buzzcocks 2 are out on the streets, both bands now bankable public property. Away from that, and there is a way, how do they see their roles? Shelley sings, am I a shaman or a sham? A shaman being someone who paints his dreams. A story I've heard is that um, in, in primitive tribes, there's this one man who, who, who goes around from tribe to tribe, and whenever they have a problem, they see him and they all get there and they all get out the uh, weird concoctions which alter people's minds and and they, and they tell him the problem and he take he takes all these substances and and he goes off to this hot or a cave and goes to sleep and he, and he wakes up in the morning and he paints a picture or does something and, and he goes away and then all, all the elders and everyone all go into the into this hot and they'll see this this picture or join and, and they all interpret it the way that they think that it should be interpreted. As far as I'm concerned, I... show people what they want to see. Uh, they may not be aware of what they want to see, but uh, I will assure them, uh, eventually, that... Uh, they're seeing what they want to see. So it's almost like an ink blot. Steve Diggle, guitar and vocals. Pete Shelley, guitar and vocals. John Marr, drums and vocals. Stephen Garvey on bass guitar. Sometimes we go out, but I wish I stayed at home. Oh, when I'm dreaming, I'm just lying in my bed. I think they've got it in for me. Is it all in my head? Is it in my head? How can it convince me? When everything I see just makes me feel awful. And if it's true, I'm very proud of you. 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 Before the encore, and there'll be an encore, a few personal details. What about Peter? Can you describe him? I think... Um, I think Peter deals... honestly with... with what he writes about, which is as... as good a thing as you can say about anybody. He's very obscure at times. Uh, sometimes it seems very guarded. But if, if you can actually get through the uh, cordon around him, then uh, he's, he's a really nice person to get on with. <laughs> a cordon? It may be his, his way of tackling all this modern living. Um, he enjoys keeping himself to himself and doesn't like too many hassles. Well, if you know what you're doing, you learn what protection you need. Uh, and maybe that's where a lot of people go down the lift shaft. What does your mum think of you? 
Um, well, well, she likes me. She wishes I could come home a few more times. This... On July 21st, 1978, Shelley and Devoto came home to the lesser free trade hall Manchester, two years and one day after their first appearance. Buzzcocks played and magazine played, and then there was a reunion. To acknowledge the past is the best way of meeting the future, which is theirs. Badum badum. I can't control myself. And this uh, is not nostalgia. This is not even off the cuff, but it's up our sleeve. And uh... use that one. <laughs> this is uh, called I Can't Control Myself. One, two, three, four. I take you girls, you're standing there. You look as black as you love black hair. You made me move you like no one else. And when I'm with you, I can't go to my hotel. It's the time that you got me shaking. You got me so the man is a breaking. I take you girls, you're standing there. The words go round and my head is here. You make me move you like no one else When I'm with you, I can't control myself What's the deuce of being bad six side of me? It makes me think of how things used to be It makes me feel alright when I'm with you and I, we love. Yes, we love. Ba 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 I do the things that you want me to I do these things for no one else Cos when I'm with you, I think it's for myself 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 Well, sometimes I can well, sometimes I can. Well, just occasionally I can. Well, I sit here I can. Well, I'm here and the time is not quite.